Jeff, you guys fly around today? What, what was the house practice? Uh, it was good. Yeah. You know, way more uh, serious. You can just tell it's, it's here, right? And uh, kids were really locked in. Jeff, you guys put out the depth chart yesterday and had Trey Moore at the top spot at outside linebacker. What did he do to sort of take hold of that job? What stands out about him? Well, him and Jamori both will see, you know, reps. But, you know, Trey just has been, uh, he's very mature, disciplined, uh, almost military-like in his uh, preparation. He's a very serious kid. Uh, came from a great program. You know, he knows how to win. And uh, Larry Hill told me he was that. And, Larry Hill was right. He was not playing early last year and then started to get some snaps late in the season. Was there something he showed you during that opportunity to emerge then? Yeah, just in practice, just the way. It's just Trey. Trey's that way all the time. You know, he's a guy that'll be a single digit guy one day. You can just you can just spot him, and he's one of those kind of people. Jeff, I think there were four freshmen on the offensive line in the two deep. That's something that's kind of unique. What did those guys do to earn that? Um, you know, well, we had a had some good recruiting and those guys are big and they're they're good football players so hopefully we don't see them uh, i hope those other guys are out there but yeah. they're ready if they got to go out there what? a lot of coaches in your situation have talked about the challenges of sustaining success after a big year kind of what, what are your thoughts on that heading into this opener it's important to us it's something we've talked about a lot um, you know it's just it's hard to do College of the ball is extremely competitive and it's changing all the time. It's a hard business to stay up on. And uh, we're just trying to make sure that we don't forget where we came from. And uh, that's the fastest way to let your culture decline is to forget where you came from and to think you're something that you're not, right? We want to always maintain that mindset that we're a new program, uh, commuter school, all the things we hear, uh, you know, don't, they don't tell us, you know, sometimes it's UTSA and sometimes they confuse the letters, right? So we don't let our kids forget, that, you know, who we are and what we're about. We know who we are. Uh, we just want to make sure the rest of the country knows. And this is another great opportunity Saturday for that. It's a really good football team coming here. It seems like there could be a delicate balance between kind of holding on to everything you just talked about, but maintaining that underdog thing and yet trying to I guess capitalize on all the confidence you built last year. How do you kind of navigate that? It's just our brand. We we know who we are. Uh, we know that triangle of toughness. I mean, like that that's who we are, and that's what we try to uphold every day. Uh, those culture pillars, those single digits, being physical on defense, having a mindset of running the football, playing our best players on special teams, uh, having a blast on Saturday, work your tail off every day. So Saturday's the most fun day of the week. We know who we are. Coach, what does it mean to you when you were here and heard Brendan, what he said about the transfers years ago, people wanted to transfer out. Now they want to transfer into this program and since you're the head coach, what does that mean to you? Even more than that, Larry, who couldn't coach Brendan Brady? I mean, my gosh, what a great interview that was. I'm so glad I got to sit there and listen to it. I actually got to hear him today. We had him speak to the team on what physical toughness uh, means to him. And he just did an unbelievable job of describing what physical toughness means to him and his definition of physical toughness, why he plays hard is uh, what what does he regret more? Does he regret more sticking his face in the fire and maybe having that pain while he's protecting his teammates? Or does he regret more not sticking his face in the fire and letting his teammates down? He did just a fantastic job. Now, I didn't answer your question at all, Larry, so you get to remind me of the question. <laughs> when you hear him say something like, uh, you know, Players used to want to transfer oh, yeah, out of I'm UTSA on, now. On. Thank you for transferring in. in. Yeah. So, what does that mean to you as the like, head coach? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> right? I'm, I'm like, uh, well, that's a good sound bite. Thank uh, you. Yeah. You know, uh, he's right. I mean, when you get a, a guy like Joe Evans who's played on the national championship team at LSU, you know, Nick, three year starter at West Virginia, uh, you know, Pete Cage from LSU, Trey Smith, the leading rusher on Arkansas's team last year. Those are some. Pretty impressive schools, right? Uh, but what you what it reminds you of? Kids want facilities. Uh, they want NIL deals. Uh, you know, all those things. Kids still buy with their eyes. Uh, but what's most important is relationships. And uh, the word really has spread throughout the country uh, that we treat our kids really good. We take care of our kids, uh, and we coach them hard, and we just love them harder. And uh, 
I have said it a million times, like-minded people surround themselves with like-minded people. And uh, guys that come here, they know what they want, right? And because of the words out there on the street, how we treat them. Talk about the word of the street, Coach. Uh, as far as the springboard going from 1-0 and the difference of 1-0 and to 0-1, talk about you know a ranked team coming in and the rest of the non-conference schedule you guys are facing. What can this do, uh, a win against a ranked team? Well, it can put you right back on the national scene immediately, right? Let's just be honest, there's nobody out there picking us to win. So, I mean, if we could somehow go out there and shock the world, it's going to immediately have everybody talking about us again. And if not, it's just going to be Houston's going to be the story, as they should be. They've got a great team as well. Coach Logerson's got a great career. and uh, But what a great opportunity for, for us uh, to defend you know, the Alamo Dome Saturday. Jeff, what did Venley do to get in the mix at left tackle when he was not part of that conversation initially? Uh, you know, he just kept making plays. And uh, so we moved him out there, and he did really good. So he's a big, strong kid with a great attitude, and I'm excited to watch him play Saturday. Jeff, there were two transfers that I didn't see on the depth chart, Tony Wallace and Payne Herbert. Can you give us a hey, – Bear. Hey, hey, Bear, can you give us their status on those guys? Yeah, uh, Payne is uh, injured. Right now, he'll miss some time. And Tony's dealing with some off-the-field stuff right now. We'll get him back here pretty soon. You guys had Ben Rios in the mix at left tackle as well. It's kind of rare for a freshman to be in that spot. What did he do in this fall to turn that? We're really thrilled with both those Central Catholic kids. Uh, DeAndre as well. Uh, they're big. They're intelligent. They love San Antonio. Uh, they're really proud to represent this university. Uh, we, beat those, we beat out some really good schools on those kids and because uh, they love the city. And they want to stay here. So, uh, you know, some great possibilities for NIL deals for any boosters that are listening for those young men. <laughs> so much talent at the skill positions on both teams. Does it feel like this could be a pretty high scoring game? Who knows? They're the top 10 ranked defense in the country. They're number one statistically on third down. They're ranked very high in the red zone. But Doug's done a fantastic job. Uh, so, his kids fly around. So, I, I don't see high scoring doesn't come to my mind. Uh, when I watch his defense, uh, we hope we can slow them down. I mean, number one, that receiver is really different. Uh, the running back four is very different. Uh, the tight end's different. And of course, anytime Coach Hogerson has a quarterback that's been playing that long for him, uh, usually that kid has an incredible senior year. Did you have seen any? You keep bringing it up. Are you seeing any progress on the NIL stuff? Yeah, we get we get new stuff. You know, somebody's asking me about it all the time. I, Send them to compliance, turn them loose. I mean, you know, I'm really excited about that. I, I get it literally all the time. And it, it's awesome. Uh, the way I've explained to our kids, the way I wish they, I hope they set their deals up, I, I want them to serve. I don't want them just to be just getting money. You know, I want them to go do stuff and, and earn that money. And uh, I think that's the way my team is. And I think that's the way our community is too. Jeff, do you have any expectations on the crowd size for Saturday? You know, I, I I haven't paid a lot of attention to it. Uh, I would hope, you know, that people would show up, but I really don't have control over that. Uh, we, we try to play the game the right way. Uh, we, we hope our way we play is exciting, from the pillow killers on the sideline to just the way our kids celebrate and have fun. We try to play a real clean style of ball. We're not a very penalized team. Um, so that should be attractive to fans, and I understand. You know, money's tight, and it's Labor Day weekend, so there are some other things going on. But, man, it, our kids really respond uh, to our crowd. They, there's a special relationship on our walk. You can just feel our crowd and our kids really uh, bond well together. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it.